Hey everyone, it's Nora from Nora's Ark here. It's late May in Wisconsin and it's finally starting to look like a garden around here. We've got so many flowers that are blooming, the bumblebees are going hard, and we've gotten a majority of our plants in the ground. So what are we gonna talk about today? Today we're gonna show you a complete tour of our garden. We'll show you everything that we've gotten into the ground, the few plants that we have left to get in the ground, and then we'll also talk about a few things that we're doing differently this year. So let's get into it. We had to be careful coming out here because as I mentioned, we have a lot of plants in the ground now, so we had to make sure we didn't step on anything. Speaking of the ground, it is a muddy mess out here. We have gotten seven and a quarter inches of rain in the past week. I'll say that again, seven and a quarter inches of rain. That is a big contrast from last year. Last year, it was like a drought around this time. So, hey, at least we've got rain, but vegetables usually like about one inch of rain per week. So we've gotten about seven times more than that. So we'll see what happens. Can't control it, can't change it. So we're just gonna roll with it. So let's talk about some of the stuff that we put in the ground over here. And normally, like I mentioned, the seven inches of rain, we would not wanna transplant our plants right now just because the ground is so saturated. But just with the timing of our life, we had to do it this weekend, so they went in the ground. So what do we got? We have our tomato plants over here. We did about uh, two rows of 12 tomato plants. So we've got 24 tomato plants in total, 12 cherry tomatoes and 12 heirloom, bigger slicing tomatoes. And then another thing that we caught in the ground this weekend is our basil plants as well. So last year we planted our basil plants near our tomatoes and basil and tomato plants are companion plants. And we thought our basil plants did really well and so did our tomatoes. We didn't have any problems with pests on our tomatoes. And they say that, that when you plant your basil plants, they give off a smell that does deter pests from coming to your garden. So this year we planted them around our tomato plants. And then we also did a little bit of a border around this area as well. And then one thing that we're doing differently this year to add to that companion planting nature is we planted some marigolds next to our tomatoes as well. And there's a few reasons that we put the, the marigolds in. Like I mentioned, they can be a companion plant, they can deter pests, and really they just look really pretty. So it's a way to add more color to the garden. And also once they get bigger, we're hoping that they will ward off some of the weeds that'll be on the ground by our tomato plants. And that's something different that we're doing in general, we're doing differently this year in our garden as we're planting a lot more flowers in our vegetable garden. And the reason that we're doing that is one, we kind of want to have a more lower maintenance vegetable garden this year. And if we have a bunch of flowers, we don't necessarily have to harvest those and tie those up to stakes and do all that kind of stuff with them. So they will be a low maintenance plant that we'll have in our garden. And then also they're just going to look really beautiful and add a bunch of color to our garden. And as I mentioned too, they also will be companion plants because they'll bring pollinators to the garden. They will ward off pests and then certain, or some of the flowers, they also attract pests to the flowers so that way they don't go on your vegetable plants. So some of the other flowers that we planted by seed this weekend were zinnias, mar or zinnias nasturtiums, and cosmos. So we planted all those as well. So now that we've talked about what we've got in the ground over here, let's go look at a few more of the plants that we transplanted this weekend. A few of the other seedlings that we transplanted this weekend were our pepper plants and our eggplants. And something we're doing differently this year with our peppers is we are not planting a ton of them. In past years, we've planted 80 pepper plants, 30 pepper plants. We decided to keep it simple this year and we're only doing 12. <laughs> So we have a lot of peppers that we've dried over the years and we have those in our basement. So we're gonna to try to go through those. And so we decided to not even do any hot peppers this year. We're just doing sweet peppers or bell peppers. And then a couple of other things that we transplanted this weekend was dill. And then we did some of our Swiss chard plants. And most of the plants that I listed off are plants that usually have to have warmer temperatures like tomatoes, eggplants, peppers, those need warmer temperatures. So we typically wait until Memorial Day weekend to plant those. And for those of you not in the United States, that is either the second to last or the last weekend in May. So that's when we transplant all of our warm crops. And something that we did differently this year 
is we didn't transplant every single plant on Memorial Day weekend. So typically in the past we have done that, but that gets really overwhelming, especially when you have a thousand square foot vegetable garden. So this year, something that we did differently is we transplanted a lot of our cool season crops about three weeks ago. So we transplanted our parsley plants, which we started by seed and those we had in solo cups and then we transplanted those into the ground. We're doing a giant patch of parsley this year because we sell a lot of that herb to the restaurant that we sell our produce to. And then other things that we transplanted a few weeks ago, well, we didn't transplant them, we started them by seed, I should say. So we have our carrots over here that we started by seed. Those are starting to pop up since we, trans or we planted them a few weeks ago. And then we have our radishes right next to me. And you can see these are getting pretty big because like I said, they've already had three weeks of growth. And then a few other things that we transplanted a few weeks ago were our onions those aren't looking too great, honestly. They just didn't get big enough because we started them by seed. And then we also transplanted a lot of our cool season crops like lettuce, Swiss chard, and kale into our green stock planter as well. So like I mentioned, that's just something that we're really focused on doing differently this year is making sure that we don't overwhelm ourselves by having to transplant or plant by seed a bunch of crops all in the same weekend. Oh, and then one more thing also uh, I forgot to mention is we did our beets as well. And those are also looking pretty tall and looking pretty good. So now that we've covered most everything in the big garden here, actually I have one more thing that I want to show you that we did transplant a few weeks ago. I cannot believe I almost forgot about our potato plants because we are really excited about these this year. We also planted these about three weeks ago when we planted our parsley and they're already looking really good. Something that we decided to do different this year is that we actually put our potato plants in the ground. So last year was our first year growing potatoes and we grew them in grow bags. And the reason that we did that was because they're supposed to be a lot easier to harvest then because at the, when you're ready to harvest your potatoes, you can just dump out the grow bag and then you just dig through the dirt and you can harvest them that way. You don't have to do any digging. And it definitely was a lot easier to harvest them that way. And it was kind of fun because you got to dig through the dirt and treasure hunt for potatoes. But what we thought was that our potatoes didn't get like we didn't get as big of a harvest as we could have from our potato plants because they didn't have as much room to spread out in those grow bags. So what we wanted to do differently this year is actually put our potatoes into the ground. So we have about a 27 foot row of potatoes over here and that gave us about 35 potato plants. And what we did is we got a cubic yard of organic compost delivered here so that way we could make a hill for our row because we wanted to have like, it was about four to six inches of dirt that we wanted to have. So that way we could plant the potatoes in there and it'd be really easy to just like stick them into that mound versus actually having to dig holes in our soil. And then another reason is too, is that we may hill them up with some more dirt. So give us a good base by having this, this mound of dirt here. So that just made it really a lot more easy to plant them. And we think that it also is gonna help with giving them more of like a well draining soil. I guess potatoes really like that as well. And then one more thing I just wanna show you guys before we make our way out of the big garden is this monstrous kale plant behind me. In our garden tour about a month ago, we showed you guys this kale plant. It survived the winter and now it is just way bigger than it was even a month ago and it's got flowers on it and somebody told us in the comments on our last video that we could harvest the seeds from this kale plant so if you're out there or if anybody else knows can you tell us how exactly we're supposed to do that because we haven't had a chance to look it up yet but we definitely want to harvest the seeds from this kale plant because that commenter said that since this kale plant survived the winter it's really strong and suited to our environment so we should save the seeds so that way we can plant them again and th that those kale plants will be really strong. So let us know if, if anyone else knows about that out there. Let us know in the comments of how we can do that. 
But now that we've covered a majority of the stuff that we have in our big garden, let's go take a look at what we have in our green stock and take a look at our mushrooms. So over here around the outside of our garden, we have our green stock planter and our mushrooms, which I'll talk about in a minute. But first let's talk about what we have in our green stock. So we have some cilantro and then we have a bunch of different greens. We have arugula, kale, a bunch of lettuce, which you can see is looking amazing. We've been making so many salads and it just feels so good to harvest fresh lettuce from the garden again. But one thing weird I wanted to show you guys and see if anybody has any tips or if this has happened to them is our Swiss chard is getting like sunburnt and I'll show you guys a close up of it, but it's just super strange because it's getting sunburnt and really this part of our yard doesn't get that much sun because we have a big birch tree here that gives it a lot of shade. And also like we've planted Swiss chard for like the last five years and it's one of our favorite greens to grow because it's very heat tolerant and it just always does really well for us. And this is the first year that that has happened. So we're going to have to research that and see why that's happening. But I don't know if like the sun is just really intense this year or like what's going on with that, because we've definitely had Swiss chard in our garden and it's been like 90 degrees and we've never seen something like that happen. And then we also have some Swiss chard plants up by our house and that area gets like no sun and it's also happening to them up there as well. So it's just super weird and not what we would expect from our Swiss chard plants because usually they're very heat tolerant. So like I said, we're gonna research that and then we'll probably just pick off these leaves that all look very sunburnt to hopefully make the plant so that it can bounce back. But other things that we've got going on over here is we have our oyster mushrooms that we planted in laundry baskets. And we did a video on that that goes into step-by-step -step of how you actually do that. But we did that about a week ago and it usually takes about a month before those pop up. So we're just like patiently waiting and really hoping that those come start popping out of the holes soon. And that's one good thing I guess you can say about getting seven and a half in, or seven and a quarter inches of rain is our mushrooms really like water. So we're just like really hoping that those pop up soon. And then something else that we have over right um, a few right behind Seth with the camera is we have our grape plants as well. And those are looking so awesome. And the reason that I mention those is because we actually pruned those very heavily this year because they were getting out of control. And that was like one of the first times we really did that. So we weren't exactly sure what we were doing, um, but we're really happy that they're coming back and they look really healthy. So we must have done something right. So that we're definitely excited that those look really good. And then the other reason I mentioned the grape plants is because underneath the grape plants, we also inoculated that mulch. Inoculating is just a fancy way of saying we planted some mushrooms in the mulch and we did wine cap mushrooms over there. So those probably won't come up until the fall because we did it a, a few weeks ago, but we've also been eagerly checking that patch to see if any mushrooms pop up. So now that we've covered our mushrooms, our green stock and our grapes, let's go take a look at what we have going on up by the house. Up here by the house is where we li like to keep a lot of the stuff that we use frequently in the kitchen. So up here we have our herbs. We also have our lettuce behind me. We have some more Swiss chard and some more lettuce. And like I mentioned, it's just so awesome to be eating a bunch of salads fresh from the garden again. Some other stuff that we also have up here is our asparagus patch and that just really didn't seem like it did well this year. I think that's its sixth year this year that we've had that planted and we were expecting to get a lot more asparagus off of it. I think we got more asparagus off of it last year than we did this year. So that was kind of disappointing, but we were also talking to our neighbors and they said that their asparagus patch didn't do well either. And theirs is definitely more established and bigger than ours. And they said they barely got any asparagus off of it. And last year they were giving it away to us because they had too much asparagus. So that was strange. And I'm curious if anybody else lives in Wisconsin, leave us a comment and let us know, like, did your asparagus patch do well this year? Or was yours kind of less than outstanding like ours was? But something else uh, different that's kind of happening this year is we have our strawberry patch that is looking awesome. 
we actually pulled a lot of those strawberry plants out because we were just trying to get a lot of the weeds out of there and we were a little bit worried that the strawberries wouldn't be as big or we wouldn't have as many and they've definitely filled out and they have really big leaves and we have a ton of strawberries in there that are about to turn red and the crazy thing is is that we already have some strawberries that are turning red we picked one so far i think annie picked one too <laughs> and so we picked like two so far and there's a lot more in there that are just starting to turn red which is pretty crazy because usually you don't get strawberries until June in Wisconsin. And it just kind of seems like a lot of things this year are just a few weeks early. Like also, for example, our peonies, those have already bloomed and they're already spent. So those usually don't come till around June either. So it just seems like the trend this year is that things are coming a lot earlier than they normally do. And then also I wanted to mention our green onions. We were eating a lot of those, but now our green onion patch is pretty much done for the year. It's going to seed. That's what these bulbs are that are on the top. They're called the seeds of the green onions. And what'll happen now is they're actually called walking green onions. They'll fall over and then they'll replant themselves. So then that patch will keep spreading. So we might get another like round of green onions a few months into the summer when those new seeds pop up. But we were using those a lot and now they're pretty much just like woody and they've gone to seed. So we haven't really been using those as much. But something we have been using a lot of is our herbs. It is crazy how much these have grown in just one month. So we showed you guys these back in April and they definitely were not as big as this. So it's definitely turning into an herb jungle. Our sage is flowering, the bees and the pollinators, butterflies love the sage flowers. So it's super cool to sit out on the step and just watch them go from flower to flower, putting in all their work. But also what we did today is with our herbs is we picked some of those and we are making an herb bread that is rising on the counter right now. So we're pretty excited to have that later. On the other side of our garlic bed, we have another herb bed and that one is just exploding with growth as well. And over there we have our lavender plant and a month ago we pruned that back and it's doing really well so we pruned that correctly <laughs> we're a little bit new to the pruning thing but anyway that plant is just looking amazing and the lavender is you can see the buds of the lavender so i'm really excited for when that is going to flower so speaking of our garlic we saved the best for last. I cannot wait to show you guys how big our garlic plants are. Not sure if you guys can see me behind this hedge of garlic. Our garlic is over three feet tall now. This is the biggest that it's ever been. We are so excited to harvest this stuff and see what baseball size heads of garlic that we will have. So our garlic was really big last year. And like I said, this is biggest it's ever been so we cannot wait to harvest it also what we noticed this week is that we have scapes popping up so if you don't know what scapes are we do have a video that dives into all the details on those but what's exciting about that is that our scapes are popping up which means two things one we are not going to fertilize this garlic anymore and two we are going to harvest this garlic in about three weeks so the wait is on and we get to see how big these heads of garlic are and like I mentioned uh, with the scapes, we have a video that goes into scapes. We also have a video that goes into how to fertilize your garlic. But I just wanted to give that PSA that once you start seeing scapes, do not fertilize your garlic anymore. Like I said, it's just crazy how big this garlic is. It's over three feet tall. I feel like I'm getting lost in the garlic patch. But we wanted to save this for last and show you guys what it looks like. And one more thing that I do wanna show you guys before we wrap up the video today is the rest of the seedlings that we still will have, that we still will be transplanting into our garden next weekend. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, we have a majority of our plants in the ground, but we still have a few more that we need to transplant. So I'm sitting next to the rest of our seedlings that we have to transplant next weekend. And that includes our kale, our Swiss chard, we have more basil plants because who doesn't love basil? And like I mentioned, it makes a great border for pests in the garden. And then we also have our cucumbers and our squash. So those will all go into the ground next weekend and then we'll have 95% of the stuff that we need to get into the ground 
in the ground. And then one last thing I want to show you guys that we have next to our garlic is we have these radishes that we planted about a month ago. And check out this picture perfect radish. It looks amazing. So what are we going to do with this picture perfect radish, the first one that we've harvested of the season? We're going to give it to Annie because she's the best and she deserves it and she loves radishes. If you guys learned something from this video today, make sure to give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to our channel so you can stay up to date on how our garden progresses throughout the season. And now we're going to go get Annie so she can have a good snack. Hey, good girl.